Hey guys, welcome to my video on dead weight loss. Uh, I'm going to pick up where we left off on my big review. Uh, if you didn't see it, you might want to watch that first. It'll help these pictures to make sense. But what I've got here is a summary of consumer and producer surplus and dead weight losses in a supply and demand market with these various interventions. In this video, I want to take a deeper look at the dead weight loss and what it can mean for us. So in all of these cases, a deadweight loss is this triangle uh, reaching towards equilibrium and getting bigger as it reaches away from it. Later on, uh, when we get to some externalities, I might have a deadweight loss on the other side, but it'll still have a point at equilibrium and get wider the farther away it gets. And it generally has something that looks like this. There's your demand curve, which represents your willingness to pay. There's a supply curve that represents your willingness to sell and where they interact or intersect with each other you have your equilibrium and your market is creating some lower quantity that's the story with each of these that i have here and that shaded area we call dead weight loss it's lost surplus it would have been consumer or producer surplus if the market were allowed to reach equilibrium but now it's just not, it's not any kind of surplus. Here's the thing though, now, dead weight loss in this case comes from a market that has too few transactions. This Q less than Q star means that there are mutually beneficial transactions, meaning it would benefit both buyer and seller that are not being allowed to occur. And that can lead us to a couple of different things. A dead weight loss can, doesn't have to, can, lead to illegal market activity or it can lead to, lead to creativity and innovation. Now, what do I mean when I say illegal market activity? Take the case of a price ceiling. Let's say our city does rent control. Landlords can't charge more than a certain amount for rent. In that case, it's supposed to benefit the consumers and the consumers get all this consumer surplus. At that low price, there's going to be a big shortage where the quantity demanded is much higher than the quantity supplied. Uh, it's possible that some potential tenant would tell their landlord, I will, I know I can't pay more than a certain number of dollars a month for rent, but I can pay you a little bit extra out of my consumer surplus to make sure that I get this apartment. In the case of a quota, when there's a limit, uh, it's possible that people will just cheat and go past their limit. Uh, in the case of taxi cabs driving in a big city, you could be have an unlicensed cab driving around. In the case of licenses on hunting or fishing, people can just go poaching and kill what they're not supposed to. Now, whether it will lead to illegal market activity just depends. It depends on lots of things. It depends on your values and so societal norms. It depends on your probability of getting caught. It depends on the penalty when you do get caught. But in any case, the fact that there are people willing to buy a good and other people willing to sell the good and that there are prices that they both find acceptable means that there is the potential for illegal market activity, which is also sometimes called a black market. As far as the creativity and innovation, sometimes these will help us to find other ways of doing things. For instance, uh, when I teach a quota, I often talk about taxi cabs and their medallions. Uh, if your city regulates the number of taxis, that creates this quota situation that taxi drivers can make good money. New York City taxi cab medallions used to cost more than a million dollars each. That's right, a million dollars just to drive around in a taxi. You'd pay that just to enter the market. Uh, but now, as of... When I am teaching this class in fall 2020, I saw more recent transactions at $160,000. The huge decrease. And what is happening in this market? Well, people are innovating around this expense. Uh, things like Lyft and Uber and alternatives for customers who want to get a ride. Uh, these alternatives, this market innovation, has a way of reducing the deadweight loss also because there won't be so many missed transactions because some of these people in between here are going elsewhere. 
I don't know, this is a brief overview. I just wanted to give the idea of what a deadweight loss is, as well as how a market might try to correct itself and become efficient either by breaking the laws that are making it inefficient or by creatively working around them. And also, if you've heard kids yelling this whole time, blame COVID. I don't have enough time to refilm this 50 million times. So it just is what it is. I hope it was helpful to you guys. If not, too bad. Thanks for watching and happy econing. Just for fun, here was a happy interruption from that recording session where my five-year-old daughter ripped out her own tooth. Values and be and the behavior that they. You I, got it. I pulled it out by myself. High five, big girl. Nice job. It was like a tooth. It was like. That's coming out, huh? No, it already came out. Well, I mean, like your next tooth is coming out.